السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سعید علی مردان عظمی ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل ان دس لیکچر وی ول لرن سم بیسکس اباؤٹ پولر کوارڈینیٹس اینڈ پولر انٹیگرل اینڈ دین وی ول لرن ہاؤ وی کین ٹرانسفارم اے کارٹیزین انٹیگرل انٹو اے پولر انٹیگرل اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ سسٹم از یوزڈ ٹو لوکیٹ اے پوائنٹ ان ٹو ڈائمنشن پلین اے پولر کوارڈینیٹ پوائنٹ از ریپرزنٹڈ بائی ار ان تھیٹا ویر ار از دی ڈسٹنس اف دی پوائنٹ فرام دی اوریجن اینڈ تھیٹا از دی اینگل میجرڈ ان کاؤنٹر کلاک وائز ڈائریکشن سو اف پی از a point here then r is the distance of this point from the origin and theta is the angle measured in counterclockwise direction next these are the transformation equation in order to convert cartesian coordinates into polar coordinates and for the reverse process we have r square is equal to x square plus y square and theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x please remember these equations next this is the general representation of a polar integral double integral over the general r f of r of theta da where r is the region of integration f of r of theta is a function of two variables r and theta d is a small patch of that particular region please remember in cartesian system we were used to replacing da with dx dy or dy with dx but in polar coordinates we will always use da as r d or d theta these are the limits of r and these are the limits of theta in the next step i will explain how i have calculated the limits r is our inner variable so limits of r may be constant may be variable but limits of theta are always in the form of constant numbers here we will calculate the limits of theta as radian measure angles in counterclockwise direction with positive x axis in order to calculate limits of r we will pass an arrow through our region the boundary through which the, this arrow enters our region will give you the upper limit and the boundary through which this arrow exits will give you the upper limit of r next in order to calculate limits of theta here have a look that your region starts at this point in counter clockwise direction so i have taken this angle alpha and your region ends at this point so the angle of this point is taken as beta here so the limits of theta are alpha to beta means starting angle in the counter clockwise direction and ending angle at counter clockwise direction next is the equation of circle in general form if you put ab equal to 0 means if you shift your circle center at origin then equation number 1 reduces to equation number 2 as x square plus y square is equal to r square which represents a complete circle whose center is at origin and radius r now if you shift now if you calculate the value of x from equation number 2 you have equation number 3 and 4 and if you calculate value of y from equation number 2 you have equation number 5 and 6 next we will learn which part of this equation number 5 3 4 5 and 6 is represented by which part of the circle here x is equal to minus square root of r square minus y square is equation of semi circle in left half plane x is equal to square root of r square minus y square is equation of semi circle in the right half plane y is equal to square root of r square minus x square is a semi circle in the upper half plane y is equal to minus square root of r square minus x square is a circle in the lower half plane after knowing these basic things now you are able that you can solve this question what is this question question number 20 exercise 15.4 from thomas calculus 12th edition book now in order to convert this triangle into a polar integral we have to sketch the region of integration in order to sketch the region of integration we need some boundaries and these boundaries are obtained from the limiting values of the variable here the limits of y are minus 1 to 1 which represents the horizontal lines x is equal to the limits of x are x is equal to positive square root of 1 minus y square which is equation of semi circle in the right half plane with center at origin and radius 1 and x is equal to minus square root of 1 minus y square is equation of semi circle in the left half plane with center at origin and radius 1 now please note that these both semi circles will give you a complete circle here since x x axis and y axis is not involved in the boundary so i have make them dotted this is equation y equal to 1 this red line represents equation y equal to 1 this is a semi circle in the left half plane this is this straight line is for y equal to minus 1 and this is this semi circle is for x is equal to square root of 1 minus y square now please note that 
our region of integration is this complete circle. Highlighting the region of integration, and next we will calculate the limits of R. If we pass an arrow from the origin crossing this region, then distance of each point of the boundary from the center or from the origin is equal to radius of circle, which is equal to 1. And since origin is also involved in your boundaries, so the limits of R are from 0 to 1. And for theta, if we move in the counterclockwise direction, please note that your region starts from 0 degree and after one complete rotation, it ends at 360 degree. So your limits are 0 to 360 and in radian y you can write it as 0 to 2 pi. So in the next step, we will convert our this Cartesian integral into polar integral. For this purpose, I have replaced x square plus y square with r square, dx dy with r dr d theta. Limits of r are 0 to 1 and limits of theta are 0 to 2 pi. In the next step, we will solve this integral. In order to solve this integral, we need to apply integration by parts because natural log of r plus 1 multiplied by r cannot be simplified here. So in order to perform its integration, we have to apply integration by parts. This is a formula for integration by parts. Here, in this formula of integration by parts, we will take u as natural log of r plus r squared plus 1 because integration of natural log of is not available and v as r. Next, applying integration by parts, we have limit from 0 to 2 pi natural log of r squared plus 1 into r dr minus integral bracket start r dr derivative of natural log of r square plus 1 dr. Now the integration of r is r square by 2. Integration of r is r square by 2 and the derivative of natural log is 1 over r square plus 1 multiplied by 2r. Please focus here. It, these are very important steps. Now 2 and 2 will be cancelled out and r and r square when we multiply them we get r cube over r square plus 1. Now, in the second term, please note that in this fraction, degree of degree or power of numerator is higher than denominator. So, in order to solve such integrals, we first of all make the step of long division. We will divide r cube with r square plus 1. For this purpose, we will multiply r square with r. So I have r cube plus r. Changing the signs, r cube and r cube will cancel out with each other and I am and I'm left with minus r. Now I can write this as r cube over r square plus 1 is equal to r minus r over r square plus 1. So in order to integrate this second integral, we will replace r cube over r square plus 1 with r minus r over r square plus 1. Now making the replacement and after replacing these values, we will apply integral on each term. In the first case, the integration of r is r squared over 2. And for the second term, we have to apply this formula. In order to apply this formula, there is a deficiency that the derivative of r squared plus 1 with respect to r is 2r. So in the next step, we will multiply with 2 and divide with 2 in the second integral and applying the integral on each term separately. Next, performing the integration. Integration of r is r squared over 2. 1 by 2 remain as it is. And the integration of 2r over r squared plus 1 is natural log of r squared plus 1, limit from 0 to 1. After this, we will make some simplification. You can see 1 by 2 is constant in each term and it's a common thing. So I can take 1 by 2 outside and natural log of r square plus 1 can be taken common from r square and natural log of r square plus 1. So after taking these steps, I have 1 by 2 outside of the integral r square plus 1 into natural log of r square plus 1 minus r square. From the first 
and third term natural log of r squared plus 1 is common and if we take 1 by 2 outside then from the first term I have r squared and from the last term I have 1 minus this r squared is from the middle term. Now after making the simplification we can apply the limits upper limit minus lower limit for upper limit we have replaced r with 1 and for lower limit I have replaced r with 0. Making the simplification 1 square plus 1 is 2 natural log of 1 plus 1 is natural log of 2 minus 1 from the second term since natural log of 1 is 0 so the second bracket becomes 0. Now 2 natural log of 2 is constant you can take it outside and integration of d theta is theta for the given limits. And in the next step I have to choose the property of natural log I have shifted this 2 as a power of 2 and I have also performed the integration of d theta. In the next step 2 raised to power 2 become natural log of 4, 1 by 2 natural log of 4 minus 1 integration and when we apply the limits upper limit minus lower limit on theta I have 2 pi minus 0 which is equal to 2 pi. Now this 2 and this 2 we cancel out and my answer is natural log of 4 minus 1 into pi. I hope you have understood this question. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.